truly seeking to decrease the likelihood of us getting additional cases. And if we do get cases, we have to be prepared to treat them. We had about two jobs all day. On, on a given day, we could have, you know, some nice jobs, multiple jobs. Our business is being heavily affected. Uh, I'm hearing that guests or some guests are trying to get out of the country. At the end of the day, our main objective is job preservation throughout the industry. Mass cancellations, checkouts, postponements, and downsizing. COVID-19 already taking a toll on the economy. Good morning, everyone. I'm Akash Lapinder, and welcome to the Morning Edition. The negative drawbacks from COVID-19 hitting the country's key industry, one accounting for half of the country's gross domestic product. Consequently, thousands of hotel employees are bracing for the worst. Emergency meetings underway with union executives and hotel officials, one of the big weeks sitting at that table, President of the Bahamas Hotel Catering and Allied Workers Union, Darren Woods, who spoke with us about the current atmosphere over at the Atlantis Paradise Island Resort and the British Colonial Hilton Hotel. Those employees would be working reduced days and in some, uh, well, two of the resorts, as I indicated, they've asked the employees to either take vacation or apply for a leave of absence. And that is um, solely at the discretion of the employees because um, they have to make a financial decision um, whether or not they can, they want to take vacation at this time or they want to kind of ride it out to see what happens or if they want to, to take the leave of absence. Uh, we have been in discussions with the operators here over the weekend, um, all through the day, pretty much every other hour. Um, actually putting in place the, the, the kind of protocols that we would have um, talked about and now we're moving to how do we look at um, kind of softening the impact, the financial impact on the employees. Talks are also underway with management of the Club Med Resort on San Salvador. Wood says that property is expected to temporarily close its doors on Thursday due to measures being implemented to refuse entry to foreign nationals from the European market. Club Med depends heavily on visitors from that destination. And we have some um, conference calls that we're going to be making later on today. Um, to talk about how, how those employees are going to be affected. And of course, Club Med is the major employer on the island. And so, of course, that's a major concern for us. And they would be the first set of the hospitality workers to be affected. According to their their communication, uh, we, we, we're kind of talking about um, how are they going to be affected because if the, uh, the resort is going to be closed, there will still be a need for some personnel. So it may be a skeleton crew, um, some security persons, and of course maybe one or two food and beverage persons to service those those people who are going to still be working. So that is kind of to say how those persons are going to remain and then what is going to happen to the persons who are leaving. How do we um, deal with them? While recent events of this public health crisis sparking fears and a good degree of uneasiness among many residents, particularly those who depend heavily on the tourism market. Desmond Saunders has that angle to the global threat. A quiet scene Monday afternoon at the country's main gateway. Not much activity at the London Pringling International Airport. Strict border control measures are already in place at that facility. Well, here on the Cable Beach Strip, I interviewed several taxi cab operators who say they have also been hit hard by the global pandemic. All day, we had about two jobs. All day, on, on a given day, we could have, you know, some nice jobs, multiple jobs. Our business is being heavily affected. Uh, I'm hearing that guests or some guests are trying to get out of the country, you know, so. It's me and I have been out here from the same, from early this morning up to now, you know, two jobs. Cab driver Freddie Smith says he and other workers will now tap into other revenue streams. As a taxi driver, we are encouraged not to have all our eggs in one basket. We do have other businesses as well because we all are entrepreneurs out here. There are ways of surviving on these roads. All right. 
I myself, I own a landscaping company and a general maintenance company as well. So I, uh, I will be able to survive no matter the, the, whatever comes our way. With the Bahamas recording its first case of COVID-19, officials are requesting residents to avoid large public gatherings. Religious organizations like the New Providence Community Church on Blake Road has canceled some of its weekly meetings. Senate Director for the New Providence Community Church is Uriel Adderley. We canceled our service yesterday, Sunday, and the Sunday, the coming week, we'll also cancel service until further notice. And we try and encourage all of our members to stay safe, um, if, you know, if eliminate having to go out in very large numbers, like if, if you're at an event where there's a large crowd, um, be concerned, and to, to take all the precaution. Some 700 church members will now have to watch church services online. Said in his news, also visited the downtown area where there were only two cruise ships in port at Prince George Wharf. A stark reminder of what's to come after several major cruise lines have suspended travel to destinations like the Bahamas for 30 days. For many of these workers, they can only hope for the best. For the morning edition, Desmond Saunders, ZNS Network News. Straight ahead, more on how health officials are standing ready for any potential spike of COVID-19. You're watching the morning edition. Stay with us. The Ministry of Health wishes to advise members of the public that prevention is key during this flu season. Practicing good cough hygiene can make the difference between you and your loved ones getting the flu or spreading the influenza virus. Good cough hygiene habits include covering your mouth and nose with a tissue when coughing or sneezing and proper disposal of the tissue in a trash bin. Coughing or sneezing into your upper sleeve near your inner elbow and not your hands when a tissue is not available. Avoiding the use of handkerchiefs and towels as they hold germs, becoming a nest for the virus. And frequently washing your hands with soap and water, which is listed as one of the most important steps you can take to avoid getting sick and passing the virus on to others. If you have any questions about how to practice good cough hygiene to avoid catching or spreading the flu, contact your nearest community clinic or the Health Education Division at the Ministry of Health. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Health in partnership with the Public Hospitals Authority. We play just like your kids. We text just like your kids. We learn. We even cook. We take selfies. We have hobbies we love sports. In every way, we are just like everyone else and enjoy the same things and live our lives every day just like you do. So if you happen to meet us, treat us just like everyone else. Because at the end of the day, we're just like you. Living life with Down Syndrome is simply living. To learn more about Down Syndrome, call 727-2105. This message is brought to you by the Grand Bahama Down Syndrome Society. Come on, son, I can't feel a pump going. I see you. You know where you need to go? Where? Well, to glass and accessory and parts. Man, I gone. And your door handle gone too? Does this sound like your car? Well, visit Glass and Accessory and Parts Warehouse, where you'll find a large selection of fuel pumps, door mirrors, door regulators, door handles, AC condensers, and radiators. Auto parts made easy. Located number 27 Abundant Life Road, phone 3945226. Did you know that there are over 30,000 Bahamians with diabetes and another 23,000 with prediabetes? Each year, this number is expected to increase. Many people who have diabetes are unaware. If you are having blurry vision, feeling thirsty, urinating frequently, or are unusually tired or losing weight despite a healthy diet, you may have diabetes. 
If you have a parent or sibling that has diabetes, you are also at an increased risk of developing diabetes. If you have noticed any of these symptoms, it is important to see your doctor who will perform the necessary test to confirm the diagnosis. Together, we can beat diabetes. Treatment continues for a female patient who tested positive for COVID-19. The 61-year-old, the first and so far the only such case in the Bahamas. Also quarantine efforts underway for at least eight individuals. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Pearl McMillan, during her appearance on A Closer Look, maintained that measures are in place for any potential increase of COVID-19 cases here in the Bahamas. Yes, we have the capacity. Certainly we are currently managing the one case and we have all in our plan, the hospitals have a plan for how they can actually deal with uh, a number of cases. I think it's up to six or so. And then we have also taken the, the responsibility to ensure that we are actually uh, getting the additional capacity in country to be able to manage persons who may require the hospital level care. Most persons will have a mild illness or they may be asymptomatic. Right. So what would be required at the hospital level is, you know, a smaller a number of cases if we should actually have the situation where we're having ongoing, you know, new cases. I truly believe that we still have the opportunity to decrease that likelihood of getting, you know, that exponential increase in cases through the measures that we put in place now. Now these include social distancing measures such through such through the close of such as through the close of schools and by discouraging events that will bring together large groups of individuals. As we continue to move forward with our plans and as we uh, you know work together not just health but with the wider society I truly believe we as a country yeah. we will be in a in a in a good place as it relates to how we uh, you know respond to what we kind of knew a little you know once we saw moving toward the pandemic stage we we kind of knew we would have a case but now that we do we are truly seeking to decrease the likelihood of us getting additional cases and if we do get cases we have to be prepared to treat them and we are well on our way with actually doing that so we are actually moving to continue our process of planning and, and implementing our plan. Meantime, a private provider, Doctors Hospital, also has its COVID-19 plans in place. Joining us in studio this morning are the hospital's chief medical officer, Dr. Shino Antonio Colley, and director of infection control, Erica Thompson. Ladies, welcome to the morning edition. Thank you. Dr. Thank you. Antonio, we'll begin with you. Tell us about the plans you have in place and the adjustments that have had to be made. So, as we all know, we are now faced with having our first case of COVID-19 in country. Prior to that, Doctors Hospital had already started its response plan in terms of social distancing, checking. So the objectives are triage, testing, and treatment. So on the triage part of it, since last week we have instituted that all the entrances except for the main entrance has been closed and the main entrance is the only entrance and, and upon entering doctor's hospital you will be screened that screening uh, involves uh, a questionnaire as well as a temperature check you'll be encouraged to do hand hygiene at that time before entering our institution let us in on your training and manpower capacity, if you will. Well, our training um, is ongoing year-round, monthly, um, to ensure that our associates all know which appropriate per personal protective equipment is to be used. And also, we ensure that we do mass fitting to ensure that we um, place them with the appropriate mask to be used in infectious disease cases as we are faced with, with COVID-19. 
We are about to beef up our training with training additional train observers because we want to make sure that when our associates do have to don a PPE in order to care for a COVID-19 patient, that it's done appropriately, it's done safely, um, both putting them on and taking them off to ensure that they are safe. You're saying additional, do you have a specific number in mind? We are going to train additional staff, our patient care technicians, so that not only the train observers we have now, but our whole entire force would be able to work as train observers to assist the nurses in donning and doffing. Now, what if a person claiming to have COVID-19 walks through the doors of the doctor's hospital um, with key symptoms? Walk us through what happens. So if a patient presents to us, so they will have to go through the screening process. Mm -hmm. Once they have declared symptoms or we, we observe symptoms, they will be taken to a secondary area. In the secondary area, they will get further triage. So are the symptoms mild, are they moderate, or are they, are they severe? Um, in that secondary area, which is a secluded area, quarantined area, they will be triaged according to those levels. Based on each level, we have protocols established. For instance, mild cases generally will be encouraged to just be quarantined, self-quarantined at home, and symptomatic care for your fever, sore throat, et cetera, or your cough. If you're more of a moderate symptom and you symptoms and you require a higher level of care, you would be taken into areas that have negative pressure, negative pressure rooms that we can treat you. And those we ex estimate to be about 15% of patients will have to require some sort of hospitalization and upper level of care. Lozen, was, the, was doctor's hospital capacity to actually deal with infectious pa patients? So if we have patients who are infectious or who are contagious, right now we are able to, in our main campus, in terms of our negative pressure rooms, we do, we have the capacity to treat at least eight patients at a negative pressure capacity. Um, if we're talking about regular patients and things that are, don't look infectious, then we're not limited in terms of what we can treat or how we can treat. Now we understand the government will use your Blake Road facility to treat individuals who test positive for COVID-19. Um, let us give us some more information on that. So starting tomorrow, the Doctors' mm -hmm. Hospital West facility will be nationalized. And that way, the government will be taking over the facility and all of our present um, services will be shut down. So as a result, we will have the capacity at the Doctors' Hospital West facility to treat ill COVID-19 patients, about 16 patients at a time at that facility. We're going to be using our staff, uh, highly trained um, staff in infection control and, con and infectious diseases um, at that facility. And it will be, like I said, shut down and manned by the government through the Defense Force and the military. What's the capacity of that center in terms of size? About 16 patients at this time we'll be able to, um, to treat at a time. Well, thank you so much, ladies, for joining us on the morning edition, um, actually updating us on doctor's hospital procedures in the event of a COVID-19 case there, another COVID-19 case in the Bahamas. Our news team also caught up with a few Bahamians studying in Canada. Meantime, how they and their respective schools are coping in the face of global efforts to slow the spread of the pandemic. I don't want to return home. I'm fine with continuing my studies where I am. I can go home if I choose, but I wouldn't want to risk going into large crowds at the airport. I attend the University of Minnesota in Mankato, and we're on spring break right now. It was supposed to end on the 16th, but they extended it until the 23rd of this month because of the pandemic. After the 23rd, all classes will be online until further notice. So far, they're doing a great job with handling the situation, given the growing number of confirmed cases in the state. It has been a bit frightening 
being so far away from home as well as family members and friends and um grocery store shelves have been very empty um including stores like walmart save on foods tnt markets the shelves are next to bail and universities like the university of british columbia and some more university have more pan um, classes rather online um, though my university has not yet decided to do so because the virus is still considered a low-level risk by um, Vancouver's health officials. And I want my school to believe that once the email is sent saying classes are to commence online, I am purchasing the first ticket out of this country and I'm going home for the rest of the semester. It's difficult being far away from home and your family during this epidemic, but our school and our college has provided information, support, place hand sanitizers around the campus, and also recently suspended all in-class activities to ensure the safety of students. We are able to travel back home, but many students do not want to because in some cases, you may have contracted the virus or be a carrier and sh or show no symptoms. So most of us fear traveling home because we wouldn't want to bring or actually risk infecting others in our home country. Coming up, a mad rush for water and ensuring there is no shortage of water supply. Community page now has its own home on channel 230. Be sure to tune into this channel to see informative notices, funeral announcements, birthday greetings, and much, much more. So watch the ZNS Community Channel today on cable 230. Influenza, or the flu as it is commonly called, is a viral illness that usually occurs between the months October to March. The virus is transmitted from person to person through coughing, sneezing, or talking. Symptoms include fever, cough, headache, runny nose, generalized body aches, and fatigue. There is no specific treatment for the flu, and the symptoms usually dissipate after three to seven days. Because it is caused by a virus, antibiotics are not used to treat the flu. Persons are encouraged to rest and drink lots of fluids. Panadol is recommended for fever and body aches associated with the flu. However, aspirin should be avoided due to the risk of bleeding. To decrease the spread of flu, persons are encouraged to get their flu shot annually and practice good cough hygiene. Additional information can be provided by your community clinic or the Health Education Division at the Ministry of Health. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Health in partnership with the Public Hospitals Authority. Hi, I am downtown Natasha Brown and welcome to the Ultimate You. It's the ult E with yours truly, Charles Fisher. Buddy Heald and the Kings have their... Buddy Heald seemed to be having the best season of his career. He had 32 points the other night. It was a bit disappointing, Sean A. Miller not winning the IWF World Female Athlete of the Year. The high school rankings will soon be out. Top and knuckle, the defending champion, CC Sweeting, they are always there. Who will it be this year? Each Monday on 15.40 a.m. and 104.5 FM, it's the OT with yours truly, Charles Fisher. Well, water and so 
Jewish officials are removing restrictions to an essential component to fighting the deadly COVID-19 with clean water and are halting all pending disconnections. Executive Chairman Adrian Gibson says measures are being taken to assist the public with active accounts with minimizing social exposure and protecting themselves against the virus. He says more than 40 million gallons are available within local supplies with increased checks set to ensure potability. Last Friday, I directed the immediate cessation of any and all intended or proposed disconnection exercises. This decision has been made to safeguard the health and well-being of the general public. No WSC staff member is authorized to disconnect any home or building at this time. I further directed that any and all related public announcements, publications, social media pronouncements, and Internal work orders relating to disconnections be cancelled with immediate effect. Additionally, efforts are being made to ensure that adequate water supplies are available to family island communities, along with an all hands on deck relative to employees to ensure regular water checks, minimum social exposure, and adequate sanitation materials. No further vacation will be approved through the end of April. 2020, and this will be reviewed periodically. Any staff member experiencing any possible COVID-19 symptoms must remain away from work and seek immediate medical care in accordance with the Ministry of Health announced guidelines. All family island offices are mandated to post the emergency numbers for their respective clinics and medical facilities in the event of a sensitive or sorry, a suspected positive case. Well, while there's been repeated call for calm, Bahamians are exercising anything but, particularly following the first confirmed case of COVID-19. Pharmacies, grocery stores, and now water depots are seeing a sharp uptick in the number of customers. Antoine Smith has that story. It's a way to rival that of the lines at local grocery stores. More than an hour. As motorists sit on queues, some doubling back a time or two, waiting for their chance to purchase gallons of water. And no, it's not because of a shortage on the island, but rather what residents say is their concern of being caught unprepared if cases of COVID-19 in the Bahamas are to worsen. When we went to the food store, they didn't have any water, and we knew, well, they would have had water, so we decided to come back. And I guess just wait it out, because, you know, we want to stay home and, you know, try to keep it contained instead of coming out unnecessarily and stuff like that. Cars stretching down the corridor of Abundant Life Road and onto Soldier Road, all customers we spoke to said they were prepared to buy in bulk. Operators say this is the second such high traffic busy day at Chelsea's. And despite local stores and pharmacies running out of their stock essentials, managers say mass buying is something they're prepared for, having already dealt with similar circumstances. Been through hurricanes, we had the same type of uh, traffic and the same type of uh, uh, you know, uh, walking customers and driving customers. So we prepared for it. We prepared for it. We, like I say, we just do. We just trying to do the best that we could. Uh, you know, give the public good, safe, quality water. While countries around the world have experienced a wave of panic shopping during this COVID-19 crisis, in his address last night, the Prime Minister urged citizens not to take the same route, assuring the public that there is an adequate supply of essentials in country. But as the saying goes, and as shoppers noted today, it's better safe than sorry. Water is something that you need, you can't do without it, so you must have it. You know, and it isn't something expensive that you can't afford, so you can afford to get it. So it's something you're willing to wait for on this line? Yes, day. yes. Because if I'm quarantined and I have no water, do you think my neighbors are going to let me in their house? No. Anthony Smith, ZNS Network News. Well, the streets are busy and we understand many people are still seeking more water this Tuesday morning. Our Lloyd Allen is live with that. The traffic report is sponsored by Bahamas First. First in insurance, today, tomorrow. I think by the time we then finish talking about the different traffic diversions in this area, and how people are preparing, you could come in with that. <clears throat>
Yes, good morning, Makushla. Good morning, Bahamas, and good morning to all of our viewers from around the world. This morning, we are giving you a look at a development here in the capital. Of course, this morning, we are in the era of Abundant Life Road near Chelsea's Choice Water Depot. And as you can see behind me, there are lines on top of lines uh, for persons uh, here in the capital attempting to get their uh, tap on water. This is as a result of recent announcements of uh, the coronavirus uh, hitting here in the Bahamas. This morning, I'm joined by all Officer uh, Crescentia Johnson from the Royal Bahamas Police Force Traffic Division, who's talking to us a little bit about how things unfolded here this morning. Good morning, Officer Johnson. A pleasant good morning to you and a pleasant good morning, Bahamas. And yes, we've been in this area since um, about 6.45 a.m. this morning, trying to regulate the traffic within this area. So yes, persons have been to all the side corners now. They have been waiting for long periods of time trying to secure their water. Now, obviously, uh, you have several officers posted out here. And, of course, uh, many persons are a little confused about how to uh, uh, maneuver and access uh, Chelsea's Choice. Uh, what advice are you giving a uh, motorist? Well, right off the bat, I'm thinking about the different areas you use to access this area. So we have from the highway, you have from the east-west highway, as well as Soldier Road area, as well as, as coming from the Churchill subdivision area. All of these areas they use to access this one particular area and, then, and there's only one entrance to get into the, to that um, establishment. So what is happening now, we're regulating the traffic so we can allow persons who usually use the thoroughfare to go where they have to go. Some persons are being turned around to come back and join a line. We're actually utilizing some of the parking areas, having individuals wait within those areas, not blocking the intersection and they're allowing now other persons to be able to pass. So yes, we just want to encourage the general public to one, be patient, to two, just follow the rules of the road Three, just be advised that officers are going to guide you. So just be patient with us and understand the situation. Everybody wants to get a chance to get what they need to secure. So allow this person to do what they have to do in order to get out of this area quickly and safely. Now, obviously, we want to advise the public that at this time, uh, there's no need for chaos or for pandemonium. Of course, uh, uh, that doesn't stop a lot of persons who are obviously concerned about fears related to coronavirus uh, here in the capital and around the world. What advice are you giving uh, as an officer? Uh, what advice is being offered to uh, motorists, uh, apart from areas like this, uh, to uh, maneuver the road and to protect themselves? Well, for the most part, even like this morning, we've seen a lot of people wearing their masks. We've seen some people carrying along their lights all sprays so yes we want to encourage uh, yes you being healthy and keeping hygiene in mind because your welfare the welfare of everybody is always a, a prime concern however as you're driving the street this does not call for you to do any activity that pulls away from how you're supposed to be behaving on the street we've had some persons that we had to ticket we had to cite as a result of them doing some activity that's not supposed they're not supposed to be doing failing to keep left jumping ahead of the persons who are in front of you squeezing your or, or aggressively squeezing your vehicle in front of a next vehicle all of these things that we've seen this morning they're not called for is not necessary all of us want to get what we need to get like you said secure whatever it is that you need to secure and get home or get to wherever it is that you need to get in time and safely. And of course, uh, as we are where uh, no, no laws are, are on pause at this moment, so persons can still uh, get those tickets. Yeah. Uh, also, talk to us a little bit about uh, overnight development when it comes to traffic. Uh, any ideas there? But overnight, we've had 15 accidents. We've had no hit and run accidents, and we've only had one accident, a minor, um, a minor accident involving injury. Um, the individual got some injury to his face area. And then finally, of course, uh, as we see, uh, several officers have been posted uh, here. Um, um, obviously, we know uh, things like water, things like groceries uh, would be other things that many persons may be attempted to get during this time of uh, corona. And so um, um, what, um, what approach is the uh, Royal Bahamas Police Force taking to really assist the public in maneuvering the streets safely and securely? Well, if persons have been on the streets, like we've seen last night, we've had a lot of persons frequenting the common... Um, grocery stores. So what we, they've seen is they should have seen an increase in police patrols and police presence. So yes, we are out there and we're trying to get out early. We're trying to be out in the wee hours to accommodate all persons in the different times that you have to traverse the streets. So yes, the officers are out there and we're trying as much as possible to have everything running as smoothly and, and getting back to the whole sense of normalcy. So in the it, even with the crisis, the, this um, virus going around, we still want to keep this whole sense of normalcy. We still don't want an attitude 
mode of panic. We don't want anybody to be operating in fear. So, in, so we are advising the general public to please, please, if officers are in a particular area, if you have any concerns or whatever it may be, please bring it to the police officer's attention. Try not to get into any arguments with police officers. Try as much as possible to understand and let's get through this all together and safely again. <laughs> As a community, of course. Yeah. Officer Johnson, it's always a pleasure to speak with you. And, of course, this morning, we will be out here for a while monitoring the situation as it develops. Reporting from Abundant Life Road, Makushla, back to you in studio. Well, thanks, Lloyd. Meantime, officials of the Palantra Media Group confirming that the 2020 Bahamas Carnival experience is officially on the list of postponed events amid the current COVID-19 pandemic. Acting on the advice of the Ministry of Health and the Bahamas Public Parks and Beaches Authority, Carnival officials say the event has been placed on the back burner to ensure the health and safety of its participants. Jamaica and St. Martin among the countries that have made the decision to reschedule their carnival events. Palantra Media Group representative Kenny Mackey says while an anticipated date has not yet been decided, stakeholders including the Bahamas Carnival Band Association are working to ensure the event goes on. Our offer is not that it will be smaller, but as with anything else, uh, if travel is restricted, of course the amount of participants will be smaller. So again, after the bell curve, when people start to recover, and this is, you know, whether a vaccine or whatever is run its course, we can expect a transition period before people feel comfortable getting back out. Of course, resources would have been spent elsewhere. So of course there is a look to saying, hey guys, maybe this may not be as big as, as, as promised previously, but our goal is to make it as big as, as, as ever before, and probably the biggest one, because people will be looking for something to do once we get past this crisis. COVID-19 also throwing a huge monkey wrench in parents' plans. Schools closures forcing them to keep their children home at least until mid-April. A silver lining for avid learners may be a new writing competition launched by the Paradise Island Bridge Authority. Lloyd Allen tells us more. 54 years ago when this bridge was first built, many would have known this island as Hog Island. Today, much has changed and the current bridge authority is engaging in a new competition connecting the young with the history of the Bahamas. In 2013, the Western Bridge connecting New Providence with Paradise Island was officially named the Sydney Portier Bridge. Seven years later, the Eastern Bridge is now set for its own naming ceremony. According to officials at the Paradise Island Bridge Authority, named the Eastern Bridge Contest was recently launched for students grades 4 to 6 across the country. Board member Michelle Griffin explains. We decided as a board that we ought to name the bridge and give it the prestige that it, is, that it deserves. It was built in 1967, so we thought it fitting to give it a name. So what we have done now, we have reached out to the upper primary school students and we have a naming competition for the bridge. The deadline for the competition is set for March 27th. As students are currently off for almost a month due to safety measures surrounding COVID-19, board members say this gives parents and students a great way to engage their free time. Submit the name of a person who's been developmental, instrumental in tourism and developing the Bahamian economy and submit a 50 words as to why the bridge should be named after this person. But due to the coronavirus, we've decided to extend the deadline for New Providence students to a week. And we, their deadline is the 27th and we've asked Family Island students for the April the 3rd. With more than 100 submissions to date, Board members are hopeful to make the name change official during April, marking exactly 54 years since the bridge was erected. Bridge Authority General Manager Tony Smith. We all know that the Eastern Bridge was the original bridge. It was part of the infrastructure necessary to springboard the tourism product that we have. Paradise Island is the bedrock of our tourism product, and so it would was essential to connect New Providence and, and um, Paradise Island to facilitate the ease of um, tourists getting from the airport over to Paradise Island. They say when you submit your application and response, the following are needed. Your name, your school, the name of a Bahamian deserving to name the bridge after, and a 50-word or less response on why you chose that person. All information must be sent as a single document to Bahamas Bridge Authority at gmail.com. Top prize is at $500 along with a laptop 
Second prize, $300, and third prize, $200. They say the school with the most entries will also receive a $500 prize. So despite the challenge of having your child home for more than a month, this competition can become a great way to keep your family safe and occupied while avoiding the coronavirus. For the morning edition, Lloyd Allen, ZNS Network News. It's still Nutrition Month and balancing your diet may be more important than you think. Our Crystal Darling continues her Healthy Lifestyle series with a local dietitian who gives us the breakdown. A recent survey revealed that Bahamians consume only one serving of fruits and vegetables per day. However, it's advised that the average person get much more than that in order to maintain optimum health. And with many Bahamians combating health issues associated with poor eating habits, dietitian and manager of Better Living Health Center, Dr. Ida Mayhana, is hosting a 12-week diabetes prevention program focused on incorporating more plant-based foods in daily meals. She explains why seven to nine servings of fruits and vegetables is necessary. Now people would say seven to nine that's a lot of fruits and vegetables but if you know that a serving of fruit a banana that's a nine inch chiquita half of that is a serving a little apple is a serving a big apple that's two servings a half of a cup of cooked vegetables is a serving and most times when we eat broccoli we eat about a cup okay so when you add them up you can get seven to nine servings a day and of course you want to drink lots of water so there are simple things that actually keep us well and with the coronavirus posing additional threats to health hannah says that having the proper balance of nutrients from fruits and vegetables is key especially during this cold and flu season they are loaded with phytochemicals and antioxidants that actually help to keep us well. And if you're not eating these kinds of food, you're literally opening yourselves the problem. I know our country is bracing for this virus that's going around, but having healthy immune system meaning means eating right. And if you're eating the right foods, then it will boost your immune system and you will be well to be able to fight back. And another issue many people face when contemplating adding more fruits and vegetables to their meals is how far they can stretch that dollar. People do say that um, fruits and vegetables are very expensive, and they are. Um, we can do better with making it more available. However, when we're going to um, the fast food and, and we're getting the fast food, we can take that same money and buy enough good food to last for two or three meals, okay? So it comes right down to choices. I can go in the food store and I can get four apples for a dollar. <laughs> I'm only going to get about two potato chips for a dollar. Crystal Darling, Sedanus Network News. Our Charles Fisher is standing by with the latest on sports, and I don't want him too near me. Six feet. Six <laughs> feet for you. I think I'll take 15. But what's coming up in sports? Well, coming up in sports, you know that school sports is suspended. We'll be talking with the GSSA president, Pharrell Davis, this morning. So we'll also be talking with Bahamas Basketball Federation president, Mario Bowling. They had some tournaments planned for this year in Route 2 World Championship, and that all has been pushback we'll be talking to both of them this morning so sports is at a standstill but we still have much happening with sports so you heard that stay Tennessee. tuned to the morning edition 15. welcome to sunshine on your hottest place on the planet for rims tins tires and auto sales. We are your auto superstore for Rims, Lexani, Azaras, Trueform, Western, Lux, Fuel, Track Lights, Tough, Rough Racing, Velocity, Mud, All Terrain and Local Fire Tires, Cars, Homes and Commercial Window Tinting. At Sunshine Auto, we put God first and customer is king. Blessed luck. Influenza or the flu can be serious, causing hospitalization and sometimes death. One of the best ways to prevent acquiring the flu is to get your annual flu shot. 
flu shots are available free of charge at all community clinics. The following high-risk persons are encouraged to get their annual flu shots. Children six months and older, pregnant women, adults over the age of 50, persons with asthma, diabetes, hypertension, or a weakened immune system resulting from cancer and or HIV, persons in nursing homes and healthcare providers. Additional information regarding the flu shot can be provided by your nearest community clinic or the Health Education Division at the Ministry of Health. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Health in partnership with the Public Hospitals Authority. Good morning, everybody, with all sports on suspension. Government schools were scheduled to kick off their soccer season yesterday. That's Monday. No schools until the 14th made that not possible. This morning, we are speaking with GSSA President Pharrell Davis on the way forward with just two months left in the sports calendar. It's very hard now because coaches have been preparing their teams for months now for soccer season to, to begin. And, and since... Um, to the virus, we have to postpone, and so now we have to go back to the drawing table now to sit down how best we get the season in. Now that we know we have BJC and BGC coming up mm -hmm. in May, and you see by then our season has been actually ended. Mm -hmm. And so now um, we gotta go back now and see how best we can try to get, get these two spots in, and the time is very short. You know, basketball and track and field are highlight off. Mm -hmm. T-shirt plus sports, not to say that other sports don't count, but mm -hmm. the nationals for high school basketball is off. The nationals for high school track and field didn't come off. Your feeling on that? Um, you know, precaution, safety is always first. Mm -hmm. And so I agree with um, the personnel who above us that we should postpone our sports. So we're hoping that we can get our season, um, two season begin. Um, we're looking at probably doing a tournament style season for soccer and softball, baseball. And hopefully we end the year and a time man before our, our national exams begin. Yeah, now you're going to have to get into that exam period. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, how, how would this cause a problem if you don't get these rest of sports in? Um, well, um, if we don't get it in, then I guess um, nothing really we could do, honestly. Um, but if we get a tournament style um, season in, mm -hmm. I think we'll be able to get two of them in before um, and then part of May before the exams begin. And so hopefully that we'll, we'll go back in now and draw the schedule and see what we get. Um, hopefully we get those, and I'm hoping and praying that we get those, those two spots in. What would you be encouraging the kids to do while they have this two, three week break? Um, continue to pray that things work out. Um, for the country in school, we'll be able to open up um, the 14th of April. And um, I know that, like I say, teams are both preparing for both season. And coaches are both preparing. And so it's a little setback, but hopefully um, they can get the job done in terms of getting that tournament style in. And so we will have um, at least get at least get one in, hopefully, soccer in. If we can't get a soccer baseball in, we could get at least completed um, the soccer season in. Palmer's Basketball Federation following in the footsteps of its governing body, that's FIBA, and cancelling all leagues who were in their playoffs. We are also speaking with BBF President Mario Boleg this morning. The assist and the forward bouncing of the ball. Right prior to, I should say, before the, uh, the national address of the Prime Minister, I was already in conversation with the executive of the Bahamas Basketball Federation and the presidents of the various um, member associations to start thinking about the course of action that we would take uh, since after we would have earlier in yesterday's uh, being notified that we have had one person um, identified with the virus. And so, um, it would only make common sense that, you know, having the number of persons that would be gathered in a basketball game, that I would have sent a letter out to all of my member associations that that immediately, effective immediately, we would cancel all games until further notice. Uh, because it's all about us trying to ensure that we safeguard and protect um, the fans and also the players alike. Now some national teams are scheduled to travel this summer. Junior boys, how does this affect them? Uh, right now, FIBA has uh, notified the federations of all of those teams that are set to qualify and play in the Americas Cup, which is in June for the junior boys. We're supposed to be played in Uruguay, but at this present time, everything is also on hold. So I think the world basketball has also recognized what is going on, and we don't want to put any of our players and also the fans in any jeopardy right now. Um, it's going to cause a conflict in or a, a, a delay in schedule as it relates a backup, I should say. 
uh, on the, with these games because you know the junior world will be playing in the following year. And so if, at some point in time, that means there's some, this uh, Tournament of America is going to have to be played late in the year once the clearance is all clear. But you know, for sure, this may just be a year, um, we don't know when things are going to clear up, so this might just be a year that a lot of things are going to get pushed back in all sports. You have a lot of players playing on the European circuit, uh, uh, national team players. Have you been in contact with them? Yes, I've been in contact with the majority of them, especially those who are playing in the European and France circuit. Um, the players in France now are not being able to come home. I have gotten word, last spoke to Kino Burroughs just recently as this morning, and uh, they are being threatened that if they leave, that their contract would be, uh, they will end their contract, their clubs will end their contract. So um, France, I was told that is getting ready to go on, on lockdown, the entire country. And so we got three players over there who may not be able to come home. That's uh, Dominic Bridgewater, Kenny Enzo, and Kino Burroughs. Um, they are hoping that things may be clear up that would allow them as foreigners to be able to leave and they can still maintain their uh, contract status uh, with those clubs. Uh, we have players like Michael Carey and Willis Mackey and those who have came home already uh, was able to be released. And so there are some of the players that are home and the back home are safe because where they came from, the, uh, the virus is spreading very rapidly. And uh, right now we only have one case and we just want to make sure that they are safe so some of the guys are home. What is FIBA's stance on this right now with the Olympics around the corner, qualification tournaments for various events? Well, FIBA, there's no play. There's no go. FIBA has, uh, is not even wasting time to think about it. They say there's no play. Uh, all, international, uh, all international leagues have stopped, uh, including the NBA, as you can see. Um, some wants to play without fans, but, you know, FIBA said there's nothing's going to happen, especially in those areas where uh, FIBA uh, uh, clubs are rampant. You know, you're talking about in the European leagues, Japan, and, and you know what's going on in Japan and China and the rest of those. Um, so there's going to be no basketball, and I think it would only make common sense and prudent that the Bahamas Basketball Federation and the other Caribbean federations uh, fall in line and pursue and do the same. Well, what is your message now to your local associations and uh, stuff? Safeguard yourself, you know, stay sanitized, you know, wash your hands, you know, uh, try to safeguard yourself and your family, stay away from large crowds and, and do all that's necessary, keep hydrated and take some vitamin C's and, you know, try to keep yourself healthy as best as you can. And you, you, me, you and ourselves, we have to safeguard and protect our own families when we go at home. So we got to make sure that when we go there, we do the necessary things and our family do the same to, to stay uh, sanitized for when they come home. So that's all I can say to the basketball world, the sporting world at large, that, and the Bahamas at large, you know, that we should make sure, pay attention to the experts, which is the doctors that gives advice on what we need to do, and uh, pay not attention to those things that, are, that may not be facts. Mm -hmm. You know, so once we pay attention to the, the experts, I think we'll all be fine. As a sports fan, how you manage it? No NBA, no college basketball, yeah. no night league, no nothing. How you manage it? I was watching Netflix <laughs> last night. <laughs> so there's nothing to watch other than movies now. So I think my son is quite happy that me and him can sit down and watch a few movies because there's nothing else to watch on TV. So that's, that's how I'm surviving. Well, that's how I'm surviving as well. Netflix, Lifetime, and... I also got to spend some time with my daughter who I'm really ready to go back to school with one day. And she has already gotten on my nerve. I know most folks out there are saying the same thing. School, hurry up, open, and we can get over this coronavirus. Also from this morning, the three Diamond League meets. That's the first three meets of the season. That is being canceled so that our elite athletes, they won't get a prep before the Olympic Games and also the International Olympic Games. They are meeting this morning and we should have something from them as to what will happen with the Tokyo Olympics. So much development still happening in the world of sports even though sports is shut down around the world. That's going to do it for sports. Enjoy your day everybody and please be safe.
hepatitis is the inflammation of the liver, which is the organ responsible for filtering toxins from the body, producing bile for digestion, and producing proteins and clotting factors. The most important cause of hepatitis worldwide is viruses, of which there are five main types, A, B, C, D, and E. Hepatitis B and C are major health challenges globally, affecting over 300 million persons worldwide. The suspicion of hepatitis may be a challenge as there are typically no symptoms. However, if infected, non-specific symptoms may include decreased appetite, nausea, vague abdominal discomfort, jaundice or yellow eyes, and abnormal liver function tests. If not treated, hepatitis of any type can lead to cirrhosis and liver cancer, which leads to over 1 million deaths worldwide. If you suspect you may have been exposed to the virus that causes hepatitis, talk to your doctor today and get tested. This public service announcement is brought to you by the Public Hospitals Authority in conjunction with the Medical Association of the Bahamas and the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. It is time to take a look at how our weather will shape up today. And outside of our studios, we have a temperature of 73 degrees under partly sunny skies. The winds are out of the east-northeast at 9 miles by your barometric pressure, 1,021.1 millibars. That's about 30.19 inches, and it is steady. Temperatures around the islands are cool, 66 degrees in Marsh, Abaco, also Green Toll Key and Freeport at 66 degrees in the Berry Islands, 74. Alistair and Bimini, 74 degrees, 74 is in Harbor Island, Rock Sign, Elutra, Alistair. Canal, Stanion Key, Kemp's Base on Andros, and Fresh Creek Central Andros, we have a temperature of 73 degrees. San Salvador, 74. Rum Key at 74 degrees. We pick it up, uh, Georgetown and Zuma here at 75 degrees. 75 also in Ragged Island. Clarenstown, Long Island. Crooked Island. Betsy Bay, 74 degrees. Ackland, 74. Matitan and Niagara, 75. And the Texas Kegas Islands also reporting 75 degrees. And if you happen to be flying today, well, here are some high low temperatures you're likely to find at some of your favorite cities. to do it for your trial forecast now for your boating forecast for today. Northeast winds around 10 to 50 knots. Now this is for the Northwest Bombers. Those seas are going to be 2 to 4 feet over the ocean. Low tide 947 this morning. High tide will take place at 338 this afternoon. In the central and southeastern islands, we have caution flags up for you. The winds northeast at 12 to 18 knots. The wave fights 3 to 6 feet with a moderate chop. Your satellite picture uh, showing once again high pressure remains in control of our weather and that means lots of subsidence, lots of sun Sunshine for the next uh, couple of days. Just a little ribbon of cloud to the extreme southeastern parts of our country. But our forecast for today calls for mostly sunny and pleasant weather. 81 degrees for your high temperature. And tonight, a beautiful night with clear to partly cloudy skies. Low temperature around 70 degrees. And the extended weather forecast, beautiful weather, as we said, right through the seven-day cycle. That will take us into uh, next week. And we'll be holding those daytime temperatures in the low 80s, low 70s for your nighttime temperatures. McKissioner? Well, that does it for our morning edition from all of us here have a wonderful day and certainly do keep safe